six days before Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we begin Mass on this Palm Sunday, this Passion Sunday, let us call to mind our sins and entrust them to the mercy of the Father. Lord Jesus, you are the firstborn from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you love and encourage your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you will draw us into your body risen in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock, mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have you me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. 
In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, my God why, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked at an opportunity to hand them over. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared a Passover. When it was evening, He reclined at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and give it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. 
Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with, a, with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed the third time saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And out and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the come out. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, 
though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who tested. This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After the consultation, they use it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. This is why the field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled, with, then was fulfilled what has been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. He questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast of Go feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, 
or Jesus called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with the righteous man. I have suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the, and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, called Christ? They all answered, Let him be crucified. Then he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that it was not succeeding at all, but that, that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands inside of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about, about him. We, weaving a crowd, a crown out of the thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mock him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they mocked him, they stripped him off of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. When they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed him, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two re revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by, passing by revealed him, reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and put it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. 
But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered to the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the man with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, and the, mother of son, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Jesus wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he knew in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, one, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. I want to share this picture with you for one moment. That little boy in the white shirt is my grandpa, Frank. That's Jack in the middle and their sister Mary on the right. After this photo was taken, two more kids were born to Simon and Julia Bartosik, Gertrude in 1895 and Hattie in 1898. When we were children, Gramps used to tell us stories about growing up in northern Wisconsin, stories with trains and wolves and meteorites in them. They had happy endings. But when Frankie was 16, all the children fell ill. And whatever it was, Big Brother was sure that it was he who had brought it home. The boys recovered. The girls did not. Hattie, 
died on December 12, 1904, Gertrude on the 15th, and Mary on the 25th. They were six, nine, and 14 years old, respectively. When he was an old man, Frank still wept like a little boy when he told that one. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. The people who welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem by waving palm branches in the air over him and laying their cloaks in the street under his feet on that day long ago were tired of suffering. Through centuries of corrupt leaders, war, famine, pestilence, and exile, the Jewish people stubbornly preached a God who still loved them in a fatherly way. They expected him to. And they were expecting of Jesus a word that would rouse them and free them from their suffering. That was one week before he was put to death. What do you expect of the Lord today on Passion Sunday? To make it through this latest human crisis? What liberation do you seek? A long life? Good health? Better relationships? Financial security? The fulfillment of earthly plans? All of those things are mostly already within our power. For example, over the last weeks, we have been told again and again that our future is literally in our own hands. The Lord Jesus, on the contrary, offers us what is in no man's hands. He offers us himself, sacrificed on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. He suffered willingly for sinners. He was condemned to save the guilty. That means us. The gospel of Jesus Christ only becomes compelling when we humbly accept that. God doesn't make suffering. We did. We do. It's our responsibility. If we own the passion, the fact that Jesus took it upon himself and freed us from the guilt of it, the gospel becomes something to live for. The Lord has given me and you a well-trained tongue that he might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. It's the beginning of Holy Week. Today is the gateway to all the stories of how God's only Son took the misery of this world upon himself. Those stories are the preface to a world of other stories of how the disciples of Jesus were changed after they saw him rise from the dead. True stories about men and women like us, whose cowardice and selfishness were turned inside out into heroic courage and self-sacrificing love. In light of the sacrifice God made to prove his love for them, if you want these stories to move you, there's only one thing necessary. 
You can't blame someone else for what's wrong with the world. You can't go around the cross. You need to pick it up. You need to make it yours, as he did. Take it up and carry it home. I can't climb into that photo and warn my family about what was going to happen to them. I can wait in hope of drinking the new wine in the kingdom with Grandpa and Uncle Jack and with Hattie and Gertrude and Mary and their parents. This is the word that rouses us, the word that Jesus speaks in the gospel today. Jesus has already destroyed death. Passion is doomed. We can all wait in hope, all of us, to be gathered together to our own people. In the meantime, there are brothers and sisters down here who are suffering now. There always will be. The disciples of Jesus notice that, and they act on it. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit it was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We should pour forth prayers at all times, dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent. We ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. For the Church, that we may strive to have the same mind as Christ, as we offer our lives in loving service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the elect and the candidates for full communion, that they may look forward to becoming full members of our local church at Pentecost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all scientists and researchers, that God will guide and inspire their work 
as they seek to relieve the, the suffering of the sick and to develop new vaccines and treatments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have been furloughed or become unemployed, that God will help them find the assistance which they need to sustain themselves and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are grieving, that God will comfort them and fill their hearts with peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly Rose, and those with COVID-19 virus, that God's healing spirit will ease their suffering, free them from the virus, and restore them to full health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly those who have COVID-19, that they may live forever in the peace and joy of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our Mass, Jerry McKay, Robert Ackles, and Anna Piazza, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting manner, they may receive by your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of the Holy Church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim who, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph Fat, with all the saints whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, Mark, our Auxiliary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We'll pray at this moment uh, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So, by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.